To achieve all your goals and become everything you are capable of becoming, you must get your time under control. Time management is a skill, and like any other skill, it is learnable. You can become one of the most efficient, effective, and productive people in your field by learning how others have gone from confusion to clarity and from frustration to focus. Through repetition and practice, you can become one of the most result-oriented people in your field. To change or improve your life in any way, you have to make new choices and new decisions that are more in alignment with who you really are and what you really want. The starting point of time management is for you to determine your goals and then to organize your goals by priority and value. You need to be absolutely clear at any given moment exactly what is most important to you at that time. In each case, you must be like a sniper, rifling in on your highest priority at the moment, rather than like a machine gunner, shooting off randomly by attempting to do too many things at the same time. The only way that you can determine what is right or wrong, more or less important, having higher or lower priority, is by first determining your aim or goal at that particular moment. Time management begins with clarity. You take the time to sit down with a piece of paper and think through exactly what it is you want to accomplish in each area of your life. Once you're clear about the targets you're aiming at, you then come back to the present and plan every minute and hour of every day so that you accomplish the very most that you possibly can with the time allotted to you. The basic tool of time management is a list, organized by priority and used as a constant tool for personal management. Time management requires that you make the best choices and decisions necessary to enhance the quality of your life and work, and then you follow through on your decisions. You should plan your life with lists of long-term, medium-term, and short-term goals and projects. Plan every day in advance, preferably the night before. When you make a list of everything you have to do for the following day, your subconscious mind works on that list all night long. By writing out your plans, you will activate the law of attraction. You will begin attracting into your life people, opportunities, and resources that you need to achieve your goals and complete your tasks the very best way possible. In the process of managing your time, you must separate the urgent from the important. Most people spend most of their days responding and reacting to urgent tasks in the form of telephone calls, interruptions, emergencies, appointments, and the demands of your boss and your customers. Because these activities take place during the workday, it's easy to confuse them with real work. The difference, however, is that they produce no results. The fourth category of tasks is those that are neither urgent nor important. These activities are positively harmful to your career because they consume time that you could be using to get the results for which you are paid and upon which your future depends. Your aim in personal management, therefore, is to spend more time doing more of those things that can have the greatest possible consequences on your life and work. Review your list and apply the 80-20 rule before you begin. If you have a list of 10 items to complete, two of those items will be more valuable than all other eight items put together. Sometimes it will even be the 90-10 rule that applies. Often one task on a list of 10 items that you have to do during the day will contain more value than everything else put together. This task, unfortunately, is usually the task that you will procrastinate on most readily. Once you've identified your top 20% of tasks, you can then practice creative procrastination on the others. The only question is, which of your tasks are you going to procrastinate on? Procrastinate on the 80% of tasks that contribute very little to your desired goals and results. Focus your attention on those tasks that can have the greatest possible consequences for successful completion. Another method of setting priorities is the ABCDE method. This method requires that you review your list of tasks before you begin and put an A, B, C, D, or E next to each one. An A task is something that is very important. You should always do your A tasks before anything else. If you have more than one A task, you organize them by priority, as in A1, 
A2, A3, and so on. You then identify your A1 task and focus all of your energies on starting and completing this job before you do anything else. A B task is something that you should do. If you do it or don't do it, it may cause some inconvenience, but the consequences for your life are minor. A C task is a task that would be nice to do, but it will have no consequences at all. Having another cup of coffee, chatting with a co-worker, reading the paper, or going shopping during the day are all C tasks. Never do a B task when there is an A task left undone. Never do a C task when you have a B task left undone. Keep focused on your A tasks throughout the day. A D task is something that you delegate. The rule is to delegate everything that you possibly can so that you have more time to spend on your A tasks. And an E task is something that you eliminate altogether. You could only get control of your time to the degree to which you stop doing things of low value. It is in this hour by hour and minute by minute choosing of what you will do and simultaneously what you will not do that your entire life is made. Your ability to choose wisely in terms of what you do first, what you do second, and what you do not at all, determines your entire life. The major difference between them is that successful people are always working on tasks of high value. Unsuccessful people are always killing time on tasks of low value. And you are always free to choose. Your choices ultimately determine everything that happens to you. Single handling is one of the most powerful time and personal management techniques of all. Once you have selected your A1 task, you start on that task and you work on it with single-minded concentration until it's 100% complete. If you find yourself getting distracted or you feel tempted to take a break or procrastinate, you motivate yourself by continually repeating, back to work, back to work, back to work. Plan your day in advance and create 30, 60, and 90 minute chunks of uninterrupted work time. These are time blocks when you can work without interruption or pause on your most important tasks. The fact is, all important jobs, those with serious potential consequences, require large chunks of single-minded, concentrated time and energy. Earl Nightingale once said, Every great accomplishment of mankind has been preceded by an extended period, often over many years, of concentrated effort. Each day, before you begin and as you go through the day, there are five questions that you need to ask and answer over and over again. The first of these questions is, why am I on the payroll? You must be crystal clear about exactly why you are on the payroll and then focus your time and attention all day long on doing exactly those tasks that make the greatest difference to your business or organization. The second question that you should ask yourself all day long is, what are my highest value activities? If you're not absolutely sure of the answers, go and ask your boss what he or she thinks your highest value activities might be. Whatever the answer, dedicate yourself to working on these specific tasks all day long. The third question you should ask all day long is, what are my key result areas? Your key result areas are those tasks that absolutely, positively must be completed in an excellent fashion if you are to achieve the ultimate results of your job. Remember, your weakest key skill sets the height at which you can use all your other skills. Don't allow yourself to be held back because of a weakness in one area, especially when you can learn anything you need to learn to excel in that particular area. The fourth question you should ask yourself throughout the day is this. What can I and only I do that have done well will make a real difference to my company? This is one of the best questions of all for keeping yourself focused and on track. What is it that you and only you can do that can make the greatest difference in your career? This will do more to help you in your career than any other single decision you can make. The fifth question and perhaps the best question in all of time management is this. What is the most valuable use of my time right now? When you discipline yourself to ask and answer this question repeatedly, and 
you are sure that whatever you're doing is the answer to this question, you will start to accomplish two and three times as much as the people around you. You will become more and more productive. You will plow through more work of higher value and accomplish greater results than anyone around you. The key to high productivity and performance is this. Dedicate yourself to getting better and better at the few things that you do that account for most of your results. Simultaneously, learn to delegate, outsource, and eliminate all those tasks and activities that contribute very little to your results and rewards. The good news is that time management is a skill and a discipline that you can learn with practice. You can become excellent at time management with daily practice. Make a list of your tasks every day before you begin. Organize your list by priority, separating the urgent from the important and using the 80-20 rule or the ABCDE method. Choose your most important task and begin working immediately on that task. Discipline yourself to concentrate single-mindedly on that one task or activity until it is 100% complete. Each time you complete an important task, you will experience a burst of elation, enthusiasm, and heightened self-esteem. You will feel energized and stronger. You will feel even more motivated to start in on and complete your next major task. Whenever you find yourself slowing down or experiencing the urge to procrastinate or delay, repeat to yourself, do it now, do it now, do it now. Discipline yourself to select your most important task and then launch into it immediately and stay with it until it's done. Now, here are three things you can do immediately to put these ideas into action. First, make a list of everything you would like to be, do, or have in the months and years ahead. Analyze your list and select those items that can have the greatest possible consequences on your life. Second, make a list of everything you have to do for the coming day. Let your subconscious mind work on your list while you sleep. And third, begin immediately on your most important task and then discipline yourself to concentrate single-mindedly on this one task until it is 100% complete. The Greeks said that moderation in all things is the key to a happy life. Moderation. Now, sometimes people say, well, I don't have time for my family. I don't have time to exercise. I don't have time for this and time for that. Whenever you find yourself getting out of sync with regard to balance, and especially when you feel that you don't have the time, is when you most need to stop and think. So here's the question to ask. What would I do if I only had six months to live? If you find yourself working too hard or not spending time in your relationships, not spending time with the people you care about and who care about you, then ask yourself, what would I do if I only had six months to live? And if what you would do is you'd spend more time with the important people in your life, the time to start spending that time is now. So what would you do if you had six months to live? You know, it's an old joke that doctors say is that they never met a businessman on his deathbed who said, boy, I wish I'd spent more time at the office. <laughs> the fact of the matter is that balance and moderation in all things increases your productivity, increases your efficiency. And remember, the only reason you're working is so that you can enjoy the great things of life which are your people, your relationships, the things that make you happy, uh, and so on. Imagine that you um, are financially independent, that you have uh, 20 million pounds in the bank, and simultaneously, you only have 10 years to live. You're going to enjoy superb health, but you have all the money that you need, and you have to work at something. You cannot be a layabout. So therefore, if you could work at anything, and you had all the money you needed, and you didn't want to waste any time, what career would you choose? If you could wave a magic wand and have all the talent and skill that you need to be successful in any field, what field would you choose for yourself? And then what you do is you just start to do some research on that field. Work in it part-time. Work in it for free. Read books and courses. Talk to people who are in it. And I have spoken to literally thousands of people over the years who did that and eventually changed out of their current job, sometimes within their same company, changed out of their current job where they weren't very satisfied into a new job that they loved, and they became a star at that new job. And virtually everybody can do this. I'm going to give you a law that is my favorite law of time management, and it's called the law of three. And this law alone will enable you to be one of the most productive and successful people in your world. 
The law of three is based on my 30 years of study into time management. And what it basically says is that if you make a list of everything that you have to do in a week or a month, you'll come up with 20 or 30. Some people write down 40 or 50 tasks or activities. But if you look at this list, you'll find there's only three activities that you engage in in your life that account for 90% of the value that you contribute in your life. Wherever you are in life, there's only nine, three things that account for 90% of your happiness. It's only three things. This law of three works everywhere and it works for everyone. It works if you're a doctor or an investment banker or a salesperson or a business owner or a student. Whatever, there's always three. And so what you do is you take a, make a list of everything you do and then you ask three questions. Question number one is that if I could only do one thing on this list all day long, which one activity would have the greatest positive impact on my life? Or you could say, if I could only do one activity all day long, which one activity would help me to double my income faster than anything else? And that answer is usually pretty obvious. So you put a circle around that. And then you ask it again. If I could only do two things all day long, what would be the second most valuable thing that I could do? And you go through your list and you come up with number two. And then you ask the question the third time. If I could only do three things all day long, what would be number three? And you circle it. Now, I put every one of my students through this exercise and they're all astonished because in a few minutes, they see clearly that these are the three most important things that they do in achieving their goals of health, wealth, and happiness. And so the rule is this, is do fewer things in your daily life, but do more important things and do them more of the time and then get better, improve in each one of those areas. So in your life, there's three things that you do that are more important than everything else. And these will change over time. But you must be clear about those three things. And if you start working on only those three things, you will double your productivity, performance and output very quickly. If you can concentrate on the three most important things you do. Well, there's four requirements for you to make these techniques work for you. We call these the four D's. The first D is desire. It's want. You must have a burning desire to be effective at time management. The second D is decision. You must make a decision that you are going to become an expert in this subject. You are going to take this course. You're going to use these materials. You're going to practice them over and over again. Because what we have found is in the absence of a decision, nothing ever happens. You need a clear, unequivocal, do or die, burn the bridges decision that this is a subject that you are going to master. The third D is discipline. You must discipline yourself to practice and repeat over and over again good time management techniques. In fact, we say that time management is self-discipline in action. And the ability to discipline yourself more than anything else is going to determine your success in life. And the fourth D to become excellent in time management is determination. You must have the ability to persist. You must have the determination to keep on keeping at it, on at it long enough until you become very, very good in this field. But I promise you this, the payoff is tremendous because you see, time management is really life management. Everything that you do to improve the quality of your time management will improve and enhance every part of your life. You can even say it this way, the quality of your life is determined by the quality of your time management. The quality of your life will be determined by the way you use your time minute to minute, hour to hour, day to day, because your time is your life. In every single study of high-performing men and women, we find that intense result orientation goes hand in hand with big payoffs in life. You see, it's not how much time you put in or the activities that you engage in or how sincere or how intelligent or competent or capable or anything else. It's only what you produce, the results that you get from the time that you put in that counts in determining your rewards, not only your uh, psychic rewards, how good you feel about yourself, but your financial rewards. You're always paid in direct proportion to the quality and the quantity of the results that you produce. Point number one is that your rewards in life will always equal your results. Is we call this the law of sowing and reaping, the law of cause and effect. That the cause of everything that happens to you 
is your ability to get results and these are your rewards. If you want to increase the quality and quantity of your rewards, you have to think all the time about increasing the quality and quantity of your results. Now, the second point is this, is that most people are very unproductive. Most people could not do a full day's work if their life depended upon it. In fact, every study that I've ever seen suggests that the average person works at only 50% of capacity. In fact, in most work environments, about 30% of all the work time is spent in socializing, gossiping, wasting time, talking, chit-chatting, hanging around the water fountain, reading the newspaper, drinking coffee, and so on. What does it mean to you? It means that the average person is working at 50% or less of capacity. There are tremendous opportunities for you if you'll do some of the things that we talk about to rapidly move ahead of other people. The starting point of getting things done is the quality of neatness. The quality of neatness means that you start with a clean desk and you end with a clean desk. You start with a clean briefcase and you end with a clean briefcase. You take the time to make sure that your entire working environment looks neat and professional and productive and effective. Remember this, it's not just what you do, but it's the perception of other people of what you do that counts. I read a story by a self-made millionaire who said that he built five successful companies and one of their critical rules was that every single person kept a clean desk. Now the fourth key in getting things done is the importance of focus. Focus which leads to clarity. And we talk about this over and over again. Focus means that you're absolutely clear about what you're trying to accomplish. Focus means that you're absolutely clear about your key result areas and why you're on the payroll. We say that fuzzy focus leads to fuzzy results. Clear focus leads to clear results. And this means that you take the time to think. You take the time to think through, why am I on the payroll? What have I been hired to accomplish? What are my key result areas? What are my core functions? What are the 20% of the things that I do that account for 80% of my results? And so on. So the starting point in getting things done is focus and clarity. I call this the, it's like adjusting the camera all the time. So you keep your focus very, very clear. Well, the next key principle is concentration. Now, concentration is what you do is once you've decided on the most important idea to achieve your most important goal, then you have to concentrate single-mindedly on one thing until it's complete. Bill Gates and Warren Buffett, the richest man in the world and the third richest man, were at a dinner party at Bill Gates' home last year. And there were about 100 guests, and they were standing around at the reception drinking wine and so on. And these three men, Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, and Bill Gates' father, are good friends. And so they were sitting, they were standing, talking. And one of the other guests came up and said, excuse me, gentlemen, you are three of the most important people in the world. What would you say is the most important key to success today? And they stopped talking and they all turned and they said, focus. Focus is the most important quality for success today. We're so surrounded by so many distractions of so many kinds that the ability to focus is more important for success than any other quality. Now, I developed a philosophy when I was young and broke. And the philosophy was that if rich, successful people tell you to do something, you should do it. If they tell you that this is a key to their success, then you should at least practice it for a while to see if it applies to you. What I have learned and what I learned coaching my clients, my business owners, is I taught them how to focus. I taught them how to select specific goals and activities in each area of their life and how to focus like a laser beam on one goal at a time. If you can do that, you can conquer the world. Now concentration is, in reality, where all the work in time management leads us to. It is the ability to concentrate 100% on one thing, setting priorities, the most important thing, and to stay with that single task until it's finished. Concentration means moving forward in a straight line toward the goals and objectives that you've clearly identified. It means concentrating without diversion or distraction. Focus and concentration. I believe in 25 years of research that the reasons for success and happiness in life are focus and concentration. The reasons for uh, lack of success and unhappiness are lack of focus, lack of concentration. I have found the most important time management or 
personal productivity principle of all. And it is this, is make a list of everything you do in the morning before you start work, and then select the one item on that list that's more important than any others in terms of potential consequences, and then start on that one task, and then work on it 100% of the time until it's complete. Now, if you can do that, you can double and triple your productivity, become one of the highest paid and most respected people in your world. Select your most important task, start on it immediately, work on it 100% of the time until it's complete. Because here's what I discovered in 30 years of studying and writing books on time management, is that task completion is the key to success. It is not tasks that you work on, but it's only the tasks that you complete. If you're a student, it's completing your assignments and your reports. If you're a salesperson, it's completing the sales. If you're a business person, it's completing different transactions. Everything in life is completing tasks. Now, here's a wonderful payoff. When you complete an important task, it gives you an increased sense of self-esteem and personal power. Your self-confidence goes up. You get more energy and more ideas. You feel happy about yourself. Whenever you complete a task, your brain gives you a rush of endorphins. And endorphins make you happy and more alert and more creative. They strengthen your immune system so that you're never sick. So you'll find that what successful people do is they're always starting and completing tasks. And especially they start and complete them on time. Now, what does this wipe require? It requires our old friend and enemy, self-discipline. Now, what we know about task completion is that not only is it the key to the future, not only is it the key to getting more and greater and better opportunities, but important task completion, doing something that's important to you and carrying it through and finishing it 100% at the end is a source of energy, enthusiasm, and high self-esteem. Men and women who are working consistently on getting important things done and staying with it till they're complete are more positive, they're more optimistic, they're more self-confident, for confidence, they have more belief in, in, in self-assurance in themselves, and they get more opportunities to complete more tasks. And here's the flip side. Is completing low-priority tasks leads to stress. If you work and you get a lot of little things done, but they're not moving you toward the accomplishment of things that are really important to you, what happens is you just feel crummy as a result. We find that the average Brit, average German, average French person works about 16 hours, 1,600 hours a year. Average executive or business owner works about 2,000 hours a year. So what you do is you take your annual income and you divide it by 2,000. So let's say you're earning 100,000 pounds a year. Divided by 2,000, that means that you're earning 50 pounds an hour. This is your hourly rate over time. You can even include all your benefits and pensions and so on. But whatever it is, just let's say your hourly income is 50 pounds an hour. That means by law, the Ricardo's law, uh, Ricardo, the David Ricardo, the British economist, law of comparative advantage, is you don't do anything that pays less than $50 an hour. You only do things that pay you $50 an hour or more, or that people would pay you 50, I'm sorry, 50 quid an hour or more to do. And everything else you delegate. If there's something that someone else can do for 10 pounds an hour, you hire somebody to do that. 20 pounds an hour, 30 pounds an hour, you keep hiring people who can do things, tasks, at a lower hourly rate than yourself. Now here's the great discovery, and this again is life changing. I call it the law of three. The law of three says that no matter how many things you do, how many tasks you do in a week or a month, and it's usually 20 or 30, three of those tasks account for 90% of your value. Only three. And you make a list of all of your tasks, and I do this with my business owners, and I have them go through this, and they're astonished. And they double their income within 30 days. Because I asked them the three magic questions. Magic question number one, if you could only do one thing on this list, one task on this list all day long, which one task would have the greatest positive impact on your career? Which one task? Well, it'll usually pop, it'll jump out at you. So you put a circle around it. Then you say, if you could only do two things all day long, which would be number two? And you put a circle around that. If you could only do three things all day long, which would be number three? Put a circle around that. And suddenly, it's almost like all these other tasks fade, like in, a, like in a camera shoot in a movie. They fade, and those three tasks are sitting there, 
like those three magic tasks, and you realize, oh my God, those are the, my big three. Everything else is secondary. Everything else can be done by someone else, or done later, or not done at all. And then you focus on the three. So here's the rule for doubling your income, and doubling it again, and doubling it again. Do fewer things, but do more important things, and do them more often, and get better at them. Repeat. Do fewer things, the big three. Do uh, more important things. Do more of them. Spend more of your day working on those three tasks, and then get better at those tasks, mm -hmm. so you can get more of them done faster at a higher level of quality. If you will practice the law of three, you'll transform your life. If you combine that with the eat the frog mm -hmm. and work on your most important task, the one that can contribute the most value, and you can do that until it becomes a habit, just automatic. You get up in the morning and you just start work on your most important task, and you say, no, I don't do that. I don't do little tasks. Those are not. Those are not my job. People say, what about this? What about that? I say, excuse me, I'm management, not labor. I do management tasks. I do my big three. Labor does all these other things. They go, ho, 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 ho. So you, person who's watching this right now, is your management, not labor. Think of yourself as management and do your three tasks. If you can do that until it becomes a habit, you're going to conquer the world. All of us, over the course of our lives, want to develop character. And character has been defined several ways. One defi definition I like is that Character is the ability to follow through on a resolution after the enthusiasm with which the resolution was made has passed. So taking this course, by the way, you will make a lot of decisions and commitments and resolutions. The true measure of character is whether or not you have the capacity to follow through. Character, in effect, is self-discipline in action. Character is self-discipline in action. You can tell how much character you have by how willing you are to discipline yourself to make the sacrifices that are necessary in the short term to have a great life in the long term.